Hello, everyone, and welcome to another fine, 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 I would dare say delightful episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and you can probably tell from the tone of my voice, which it's it's fairly common, but it's for good reason. I am once again delighted to be able to make the acquaintance of a coach, Lisa Collins. Let me give you a little tidbit about her before we just start the conversation. Lisa is an author, assistant professor, playwright, which I'm I'm going to want to talk about, but we have other, we have bigger fish to fry, but I'm really fascinated by that. And trauma healing leader. Her TEDx talk chronicles the healing modalities that resulted for herself and others as a direct result of her research. There's a bunch more to say, but let's just start the conversation. Lisa, thanks for being here. Thanks for, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for meeting me. Thanks for being pretty awesome. I'm, I've known you for less than 10 minutes. I feel pretty confident <laughs> saying that. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin, for, I'm, I'm very honored to be here and to be able to meet you and to delight in the joy that we're going to share together. I love it. I love it. Well, let's, let's get into it and go back, not all the way to the beginning, because that would be ridiculous. We don't have that kind of time, but let's go back to your, your superhero origin story. So, so to speak as a coach, how did you discover, realize who, who told you who had the right words at the right moment that help to crystallize this realization, this notion. It's like, hey, coaching is coaching is my best expression of the impact I want to have in the world. It's the way in which I want to move through the world, create and experience joy and delight. How did that begin for you? Yes, um, great question. It emerged um, by a need. And I, and I kind of think that the need was not intentional on my part. I started studying with the... Um, Eastern Mennonite University, STAR. STAR is the Strategies for Trauma Awareness and Resilience. Mm. And STAR was created in 2011 after, um, after what happened as a peace building of how are we going to heal. I mm. went and took STAR and fell into it deeply mm. and utilized it as a frame for myself. And I tried to bring it to organizations. And to fast forward, um, I utilizing star and I be, I start to research my own lived experiences mm. here in the Pacific Northwest. And that is what emerged as this um, healing framework. And mm. star was on foundational foundational to that. But in addition to star, I, I started taking conscious freedom life coaching to mm. help me deal with the trauma I experienced in organizations and I took to it like a fish to water. <laughs> and then my coach asked me, would you like to be a life coach with for conscious freedom? So I integrated star and conscious freedom into a coaching model. And that's, that's what happened. If there's uh, two words there that just, I, I'm my, my brain and my heart immediately latched onto one emerge. I love, I love that word, that concept. And it's so much it's so, I think it's so at, like at or very like near the heart of not just the coaching experience, but just like the human development experience is there's just all of these forces and events and things that happen or don't happen, words said or left unsaid and events and just all this stuff that kind of comes together. And this you, you sort of who you are and who you will become just emerges out of all of that. Um, I feel like that's, a, that's such a great word because there's so there's, I think it captures both the the powers at work underneath the surface that you don't have any direct control over it's just these natural processes that happen and an embrace of like acknowledgement and some intention with that emerging you know does that make sense Absol or am i just like, am i getting it flowery but <laughs> it totally makes sense because what happened for me is like my story is the coaching and mm. it's, it's not a theory or generality that i'm talking to you about i'm talking about what actually happened for me when I went to STAR, the healing that I experienced, when I went to Conscious Freedom Life Coaching, how I unpacked the trauma of the past, which I didn't even know I was throwing it in the back of the station wagon. And when mm -hmm. the station wagon stopped, all of that garbage came forward. And then also the integration of interpersonal neurobiology. All mm -hmm. of those things wove into this healing framework that I experienced and that I became a freer human being because of it. And that's what I'm sharing with people. Yeah, I love that. There's also that, it's that uh, the other word that you mentioned on top of emerge was that foundation as you were talking about the journey. And I just, I love, I love, well, I mean, I love this. I love having coaches talk about how they became a coach because I'm, obviously I have this podcast. I've talked to hundreds of coaches. I want to talk to hundreds, if not thousands more, because I love the story of someone moving through their life. And they're just, they're, whether they know it or not at the time, they're grabbing these pieces. 
and they they may not know as they're grabbing them what what what's going to emerge, what's going to be built. But there's always this moment where a coach realizes that oh, I, I could I've got this and I've got that, and I'm you're mining your own experiences, and you're also understanding how those experiences sort of run parallel to or or counter to or alongside other people's experiences, and you're like, oh, this helped me, and I understand how, and these things together help to make me the person that I am, and I can kind of see now how that could with some with some guidance help others. And then that's the the light bulb moment, the flash, the dawning moment. And then it's like, okay, now I want to serve. I want to give back. I want to help. Yeah. I want to help you not struggle like I struggled. And in my TEDx talk, I talk about healing from racial trauma. Hmm. And what occurred for me there is that I didn't, there's so much I didn't know. And hmm. I thought when people talk a lot about racial trauma, but they don't talk about trauma. And when mm. I went to this life coach, I went with an intention that she's going to help me heal my racial trauma. And that's not what happened. Mm. What happened is she helped me deal with the foundation. She helped me deal with the trauma. And so after doing that, then I can see if it was about race or not. Is it about being mm. a woman or not? Mm. Is it about being a single mom or not? I had to go back and get that foundation real clear, work in the shadow to see what was real. And now I'm going to date myself and what is Memorex? Like, what, what is the real deal here? I'm going to date myself by laughing at that because yes, <laughs> <laughs> I remember that commercial. Well, <laughs> oh, that's such a great, it's the way, the way you describe it. It's so empowering and illuminating. And then I'm also thinking about those moments before you've really gone all the way down there. And it's like, and I, I could feel like the the memory of the fear before I committed to that work because it's when you when you when you play it out like that, it's like we're gonna go past all the other layers of trauma because we know we need to start somewhere deeper if we're gonna ever have a chance of understanding what else is happening because all this stuff is clearly happening and it's it's weighing on you. You could feel the gravity of it pulling you down or back, but you know you have to go deeper, and that's just that's both. That's both exciting and terrifying to contemplate. <laughs> it is scary. And I mean, the, for the first time that I had a, a coaching session and we talked about those sh the shadow, like, mm. why would you think that you weren't worthy? Or why would you think that you're powerless? And I started, mm. the list started pouring out of me. I remember my, because, you know, trauma happens in the body. Mm -hmm. My body was like, blinds down, time mm -hmm. to go to bed mm. and time to, I don't want to talk about it. I just came home and went to bed. And my compassion for my fellow humans who are out there thinking there's something wrong with them because they're pulling the blinds down. It's like, mm -hmm. how do we bring the light to all of our collective experiences? It's just like, it's all of our work to help one another. We only have one job to love one another. That's mm -hmm. it. Honestly, well put, well put, well said, and the lesson well learned. Like I keep I keep going around and like thinking there's more to it and kind of going around and building constructs and frameworks and they all lead me back to that. And I'm sure I'll go on other journeys. And it's not that those journeys are wrong or bad, but I always find myself coming back to that. One one responsibility that we have as human beings being the beginning and the end of everything that we do and the why of everything that we do. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I was like, I was surprised when a framework came out, a healing framework came out of my work, a racial healing framework. And when people think racial healing framework, they think, well, that's for people of color. Like, no, mm -hmm. it's for all of us. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's for all of us. How do we, we start to engage each other, heal from the past and move into the present? Mm -hmm. It's something I'll tread carefully here because it's something I've thought a lot about in the context of violence and how violence is not just perpetrated from one to another. Violence is something that's perpetrated on both the committer of the act and the receiver of the act. And I feel like that's right. true for a lot of the, a lot of the different kinds of violence that we inflict on each other. And I think, honestly, I, I don't think it could be said often enough that healing racial trauma is, it's not just about who is the giver and who's the receiver. We all have healing to do there, a lot of it. And the more we shine a light on that fact, the more we can get down to business. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, the hoop is always bigger than we think it is. This is mm -hmm. huge hoop. And I said, so we're going to start with the hoop. It's, it's dignity, treating someone like a human being. That's mm -hmm. the hoop we want to start with first. 
We all want to ground there. And then we want to look at what are the past traumas that we're carrying from our generations, from our ancestors? What is it that is coming forward that we can let go of? Mm -hmm. We can just let go of it right now. And then we can just together as a beloved community, as Dr. King says, walk forward. Mm -hmm. And I love, I love considering it that way because it is in order to properly release something, you really do have to get your hands on it. You know, and right now it's 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 floating in that dark room with the blinds closed, pushed to the back of the station wagon, weighing it down, grinding the muffler into the pavement, you know, all that, all those analogies that really kind of describe how it feels. And you have to, you know, and it it takes help. You know, it's doing it by yourself. It's a gargantuan effort, and really, it's like there there are people like yourself who are not only want to help but know how to help to bring things forward. You know, put your hands on them, bring them forward, grasp them, so that they can be released. And I, I think we. We don't realize we think it's either one or the other, you know, like either taking hold or letting go. It's like, that's just, those are two steps on the, on the journey. Absolutely. And so much of the time we want to have this be in the left part of our brain. We want to analyze it. We want to mm -hmm. pick it apart, but <laughs> really it's in our heart and between our head and our heart and our gut, we need to align all of those energies together to be able mm -hmm. to walk and not like one person in front of the other person, but I want to walk beside you. I want to be mm -hmm. with you. I want to be, I want to be in community with you. And that is where the work really needs to go for our community well-being and our own personal well-being. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't agree more. And I'm just looking up at the Zoom clock. I, 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 I could stay in this conversation for hours, <laughs> but, but not only not only because selfishly, I, I love trafficking and really moving back and forth with these kinds of things. I think it's so important, but I want to give you a chance to talk a little bit about like your frameworks, your modalities, the way that you're working with people today. So um, who primarily, and I'm sure the answer to this question will lead us naturally back into all the, all this, the important stuff we're talking about. It's kind of why I love doing these kinds of interviews. Um, who do you coach and how do you coach them? The who being fairly obvious, but sometimes it's like, do you have particular, particular ages or industries or demographics or, you know, people at certain stages in their journey that you primarily focus on your, with your coaching and your, and your, your frameworks? And the how being, again, what are those frameworks? Are you primarily a one-to-one -one coach in your work? Do you do lots of group coaching or or masterminds or constructs like that? Or, you know, keynote speeches? Obviously, you've done a TEDx talk, so that certainly counts there. Um, I imagine that you're an author. In fact, I believe that you are. So, you know, writing books, creating courses, all of the above. So, yeah, the who and the how. What is that for you these days? Yeah, that's a great question. The who is who comes. Who can hear? For those that can hear and those that are eager to, they're curious to want to change. Also, I work with organizations. So I work with organizational practices to change their practices. They may want to say, well, we really want belonging. Okay. And so how do we do that? So I've worked with the National Park Service. Um, here in Oregon, I've worked with school districts. And then I also work with individuals in groups and a, a group of people who may be, um, for, for example, I'll be working with uh, Virginia Garcia Health Clinic. So I'll be working with them coming up in, uh, in a couple of months. And as a group, they want to talk about wellness. Um, educators want to talk about, I always want to talk about wellness with them. And that's the work that I do at a collective level. Mm -hmm. um, how I always center it in trauma, mm -hmm. trauma, awareness, and resilience. How do we break off of the cycles and create this, this breaking free, which is community support. And I really believe in that what I dream of is that every community having a place where they can get this support. When they can break free of the cycles, get the support from the community, body and brain regulation, mm. acknowledge what is happening, and then reconnect with themselves. We do this individually and collectively. And that's the model that I use, regardless of what we're talking about. Breaking off the cycles, recognizing the cycles in our body, the implicit and explicit memories that we experience, knowing that sometimes the body remembers, the body keeps the score. Mm -hmm. And that when that happens to be curious, oh, well, what was that? And then I use also something that I call a thinking map, which mm. comes from conscious freedom. Mm -hmm. What happened? How do I feel? What's a deep belief about myself? What mm -hmm. is in the shadow that is showing itself as true? 
that's not true for me uh, as adult Lisa. May have been true for mm. me as five-year-old Lisa, but not mm. true today. And I want to shine a light on that. It's not serving me anymore. And I'm going to release it. Mm. I love the the words that popped like went across the back of my eyeballs as you were talking was rigorous questions. Just being like just and rigorous meaning like just like continually asking and evolving these questions, holding that space, holding that awareness and letting and and grappling with or like just kind of handling or dealing with or being present for what comes, what comes up, what comes out, what passes through, what moves forward and how I, I love the way that you that you frame and I, quite frankly, the way that you approach this, because it's it is a kind of change that happens on both the individual and the organizational level, the individual and the community level. It's it's helpful to sometimes compartmentalize them as you're talking about them, but while you're talking about them, and I love the way that you speak to them because you understand inherently, implicitly, that those are one in the same. You only use the separate terms in order to speak about them with more eloquence, with more light, with more illumination. But there's no community without the individual. There's no individual without the community. And healing begins with both and I say both and even even as I'm acknowledging they are one and the same and I feel like that acknowledgement being foundational to your approach I think that allows you to to really access and build the resilience that that you that you were speaking to hey man that resilience is everything it is everything and people feel lost and hopeless and mm -hmm. especially after the during the pandemic I could see this like you could set a spark in the eye is gone and when I'm talking about my own healing and how I was able to move from this place where, you know, the doctor told me you have to take off from work. And I said, well, how about a couple of weeks? And she said, how about Wednesday? <laughs> that I was unable to self-rescue. I was like, whoa, wow. what is going on that I'm unable to self-rescue? And then the illumination and the gifts were coming to me as I was seeking. Like, mm. what is it? Oh, I'm on the cycle. Oh, I need to break free. Well, where's my community? How am I going to reconnect with myself? And even though this is a word that obviously carries some baggage for over the past few years, but that kind of illumination, that kind of self-care and awakening and awareness is contagious. It is contagious. Yes. It wants to spread in a positive fashion. I know it's like, I almost like part of me like cringes a little bit inside using that terminology because of what we've all been going through for the last few years. But it is. It has always been true, remains true, and will continue to be true. This kind of self-awareness, self-development, community building, joy, trauma, healing, resilience, this is contagious in all the right ways. You just have to get yourself out there and share it. And I love that you are something, a term I often, I often find myself using for coaches is bridge builder. You're such a committed bridge builder to just being like, you know what, you just need ways to connect. And that, that's where the resiliency will come. There won't just be one bridge across these troubled waters that everybody has to cross and it's rickety and it's falling apart. Yeah, I'm reaching for an analogy here, but this is where, the way my brain works. It's like, let's build more bridges between more of us for greater resiliency. And let's, yes. let's talk across those bridges. Let's share each other across those bridges. Let's find new ones together and grow our community. And the resiliency grows with it. The connection grows with it. The awareness grows with it. As you grow in that communal way, that organizational way, your own awareness of self grows with it in ways that you can't quite, you don't really see coming until they start happening. And again, I go back to what yeah. that word you used at the beginning. All of a sudden, new things are emerging from within you. New modalities, new frameworks, new commitments, new awarenesses are emerging from that community work. And it's this contagious, virtuous cycle. I don't know, I get, I get very like, almost romantic about it because of like when you see it happen when you watch it when you experience it it's very it's just heartwarming only begins to describe the way it feels in my chest right you know? yeah yeah it's magical yeah yeah it's, i it's use that magical. word sometimes too magical delightful like, <laughs> the same words come up because i'm like i don't know if i have a better one i'll use other <laughs> ones but i'll keep coming back to the ones that work the best <laughs> oh absolutely and i oh, that's shoot. my hope for our world you know that we are that we're doing better and um, and that's what I'm I'm charged to do is to bring it, bring the light. Mm -hmm. You can be an optimist and a realist at the same time. It is it's not only possible; it's actually a very strong human human condition. I and I believe I, I believe that. that all the way down to my toes. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Me too. Me too. <laughs> 
well, shoot. Yeah. I'm, I, like I said, I, I feel like I could talk to you for days. I'm, I, I joked a little bit before I hit record that like, if the conversations are good, I just invite people back on so we can preserve the short form of the podcast, but still keep exploring. There's no question. There's no doubt in my mind that I'll be talking to you again for this podcast and probably for other reasons. I'm delighted that you do what you do in the world, that you are who you are. You really, I was already having a pretty good day and you've, you've, you've added to the delight in my day of the illumination. Um, and it helps that we're both living, we're both in the same area of the country. It helps that it's sunny and 70 degrees outside. We're finally moving yes. out of the Portland winter and into that, into that Portland spring and summer. That beautiful <laughs> summer and spring. I, I sometimes I forget winter even happened. Yep. It's just a dis it's already a distant memory, <laughs> even though it was just a few days ago it was, you know, 45 degrees and raining. That's fine. <laughs> right, right. It's totally fine. I'm I'm delighted we're in the same area. I look me forward too, to connecting too. again. Yeah, definitely. And before I let you go, this is another little two-parter I like to ask because sometimes the answers are a little bit different. But where can people learn more about you, what you're doing, who you are, how, what your work is about? Um, and also, where can people best connect with you? If you have a preferred place you'd like to send people to start a conversation, you know, if you like to have people like book meetings to have chemistry calls, if you have particular social media platforms that you're really active in the DMs on. So yeah, how can people find out more about you and connect with you if they want to start a relationship? Oh, great. Um, you can connect with me at lisayconnins.com. That's my, that's my website. Um, that's my website for now. We'll be doing it soon. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm active on LinkedIn. I'm active on Instagram. You can see what I'm into, what I'm advocating, um, advocating for Alaska. I'm doing different things in oh. nature. Um, you can you can find me there. But those are two good places to find me and to see what I'm up to. Excellent. Yeah, LinkedIn, the least toxic of all the social media platforms, at least for now. <laughs> and that's that's right. a low bar to clear. I know, but <laughs> <laughs> no, right, just for today. <laughs> just for today. Oh, Lisa. One more time. Thank you for sharing a little bit of your day with me. Thank you for doing the work that you do and being who you are. Um, I'm already better for knowing you and I've known you for 30 minutes. So thank so you. So appreciative. Thank you so much, <laughs> Kevin. An honor. And to the audience, you know what to do. Links to everything we talked about, and like how to find out more about Lisa in the show notes. Do yourself the favor and at least find out more. And you know what, reach out. And then come back here again because we'll have Lisa on again in the future. We'll have other people Maybe not quite as lovely as Lisa, but, you know, quite frankly, probably probably right at the same level because you know who we like to talk to here. And we will get a chance to talk to you again very soon.